Dude, it looks so good. What Except it looks like it skipped leg day. <laughs> <laughs> What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And we are Cars and Cameras, and we just built the center section of our independent rear suspension for our 750 cross cart. Uh, and it's really time that we brace the, uh, the hole. We connect the rear section of the go-kart to the front section of the go-kart. Ike has been kind of brainstorming on what we're gonna do for bracing, because we wanna make sure it's strong, but we also wanna make sure that we can get the engine in and out easily. So what do you got for us, dude? I think. What I've got is uh, a bar going from there to here, which should give plenty of room for the engine. Yep. And then a bar from here to here. Okay. And then a bar from here all the way to the front down, down there. So once we get the braces measured, cut, and welded in, we're gonna move on to the upper and lower control arms. You know what? Let's go 37 and a half because we can always take some off. It looks, uh, apart from being too long, it looks like the angle's about right. Yeah, and you made it too long on purpose, so looking good to me, dude. It looks good to me. Let's tag it. So this cut was particularly tricky. We didn't get it perfect, but I just beat it down with a rubber hammer and it looks pretty darn good. Thank you. We tacked it at the top first. Yeah. Same thing over there? Sure. We're getting a little bit of a late start today. Uh, we were at the paint store all morning because uh, I bought paint for my C10. I am going with metallic silver denim. No, brilliant silver denim, something like that. It's a weird, it's a weird color name, but uh, it goes on Harley Davidson. Ike has a 2008 Harley Davidson iron and I just absolutely love the color on it. So that's the color I'm painting the truck. So we spent the morning at the paint store. Um, but anyway, we were sitting here brainstorming on the control arms and we we're actually gonna reuse the lower control arms from the Mazda Miata. Ike figures that it would save us a ton of time to reuse the control arms because they're, uh, they're beefy and they're already done. Um, so we just need to figure out where to mount them and then we can fabricate some for the top and we'll be good to go. So at the same time we're mounting the upper and lower control arms, we're gonna go ahead and shorten the Miata axle just because I think that track width is a little bit extreme. And we're also planning on mounting each control arm assembly a little further forward of the center section. It's not ideal for the axles, but we're gonna try to shorten up the wheelbase just a little bit. Because if this thing has a really long wheelbase and we make it low to the ground, it's gonna get stuck on everything. The shorter the wheelbase, the lower we're gonna be able to make the ride height, um, and we're not going to high center it on every little root and bump. Dude, I'm ready for the uh, first batch of tabs for the lower control arms. I got the... Uh flat bar right there marked off, ready to cut and ready to bend. And we got a tool from Eastwood, which is gonna work awesome for what we need. Yes, sir. Since the control arm tabs on the Miata subframe was so thin, we're only using one eighth inch thick by two inch flat bar. So our flat bar is cut, drilled, and measured, and now we can put it in this four inch metal bender that Eastwood sent us. This thing looks sweet, looks like you're supposed to mount it to a table, but uh, in usual cars and cameras fashion, we're using a quick grip, uh, what do you call those things? Clamp or bolt to a solid surface prior to use. Oh, we're clamping. It'll be fine. Oh, sweet. We're following their directions. And so as you twist on that, it'll yep. push that out. Yep. Which bends your metal. Pretty sweet. And you go a little bit farther than what you're supposed to go, because there is going to be 
some kickback. Not bad. Not bad. If you're looking for uh, a metal bender, check out Eastwoods and a link in the description of this video. I didn't even check to see if it, the bolt went through the... Oh yeah, perfect. There's that one. Check it out. Nice. Oh yeah. Little buggers are heavy, man. Yeah, it's they're a little heavy. we got the 70 horsepower. Yeah. All right, guys, I gotta be honest with you. We took a couple days off so I could get some good progress done on my truck. Check it out. Uh, we did some more painting. It's looking pretty good in there. Of course, all that is gonna be covered by the fender, um, the upper fender and the hood. And I painted the inner fenders as well. Now I'm not as happy with those and I'm thinking about redoing them. But anyway, we're gonna get these upper control arms done on this cross cart by the end of the video today. Some of you might be asking, why do I not make truck videos? Well, it'll take me twice as long to get stuff done while I'm filming on it, and I don't actually know what I'm doing at all, so I feel like it's weird to document my, my progress when I have no useful information to actually share. Major updates, I will make videos of, though. Like, when the actual paint is on it, there's gonna be a video of that. Are you fine with us reusing the upper control arm and just uh, modifying it? Man, I was thinking originally we'd make new ones, but I mean, it's here, it's not broken, don't fix it, right? Well, I mean, we can we can put it together and use it, and if we don't like it, we can always build one using this as a template. I'm going to try to move it over and do a little offset and hope, for, hope it'll be alright. Okay. We're only using one eighth inch thick uh, flat bar for these tabs. And we really think it's gonna be fine because it's the same thickness or a little bit thicker than the tabs, the mounts for the control arms on the Miata. And this thing weighs less than half of a Miata, like about a third of a Miata with a driver. So I think we're gonna be fine. It's too sharp now. <laughs> Sick. Looking good. Okay. So I ran to the store and grabbed some inch and a half square tubing and we cut them to fit uh, on our lengthened control arms or so we can lengthen our control arms. And so we're using our angle finder tool to set the camber. So 90 is gonna mean zero camber. Uh, we're gonna shoot for like a degree of negative. I think we're gonna be more like 90. That's fine. Um, which, we made these where they can be slotted for adjustment, but for right now, they're just not slotted. Right, so once we're happy with this extension, we can go ahead and give it a tack. All right, we ended up at negative one degree camber, which is fine by me. That's what we were shooting for. Test it. Nice. And so you say the rubber is grabbing because it was rusted on the car? Yeah. So we should have more travel than that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Excellent. See, uh, what we need to do... Well, no matter what, the rubber is going to be grabbing. Once we tighten up the bolts, the only movement is going to be in that rubber. Uh, I don't think the uh, <clears throat> we'll have plenty of movement. Okay. It'll be fine. Ah! Woo! Ah! 
You good? Ah! Woo! That sucks. Ah! Yeah, I've got that better before too. <laughs> So we just bolted up our center section so we can measure and cut our axles to shorten them and then uh, we're going to weld this whole puppy up. We were thinking about welding the whole axle assembly solid so that would mean that if we needed to change the sprocket we'd have to rebuild the whole center section. But we're going to see if we can get away with just bolting it and not welding it because we're also waiting on a new hydraulic brake from Go Power Sports as well. A big beefy one like the one we had on the rail. Let's see how much room we got. Oh shoot, yeah. That's not a lot of room. No. We may need just two of those. That would be interesting. So we're getting ready to cut these axles and I'm measuring the amount of plunge we have. So I, I've marked the axle at full in and I've marked the axle at full out. And now I'm measuring the total distance of plunge that we have in this axle. And it comes out to, oh yikes, this one is less than the other one. The other one was just under an inch and a half. This is more like an inch and a quarter. One no, I, it looked like I had a, just under an inch and a half a second ago. All right. So I'm going to mark it and cut it a quarter inch out from minimum plunge. So we can go in another quarter inch and we can go out about an inch. So are we going to remove this thing all the way or just put a piece of angle iron up against it and tack it and spin it and see how it looks? Uh. I think I'm going to grind some uh, like bevel the edges so when we weld it, it'll kind of fill in the gap and put a collar on it, Okay. I think. Sure. So we've got to find a pipe. All right, so I just cut the other axle and we realized that we don't have any metal that's going to work well as a sleeve. So we're going to go ahead and weld our control arm extension up and then we're going to reinforce everything with some Go Power Sports gussets. We're going to throw some wheels and tires on it, see how it looks, and set it down on the ground. So the top and bottom control arm brackets are welded in, but we're going to use these Go Power Sports gussets uh, for just a little bit of extra. Don't underestimate the power of a gusset. Uh, you can check them out in the link in the description of this video. Pick a couple up with your next order. And don't forget to enter their monthly and store credit giveaway at the same time. Cover. Yeah. All right, so I have cut two two-inch sleeves for our axles. And here's what we're going to do. Ike is going to cut down the edge of each axle so we can weld it, and then we're going to slide the sleeve on, and we're going to weld the sleeve. But for testing purposes for right now, we're just going to put it on there and look at it. We have axles. Yep. Nice. Nice. Looks good. All right, you want to put some wheels on it? Dude, it looks so good. What Except it looks like it skipped leg day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, the Go Power Sports wheels and tires look sick and our suspension looks sick, but it does not look good together. We just need a lot taller tires or bigger wheels. Yeah, and, and we have the ones from the rail, but they have a The lug pattern is way different. Different lug pattern. But Those would probably look real good up there, dude. Yeah, let me just put, kind of put them up there and see what they look like. Yeah, they're way different, dude. That definitely looks better, looks but I better. I think the offset is a problem. Maybe if we, hmm, I don't know. What do you think about the offset? I think the tire needs to go in way more. What, are you giving up? See ya. Oh, he's back. Okay, he's just grabbing a Miata wheel. Actually, yeah, that's gonna have more of the offset that I'm looking for. Yep. But it's lame because it's skinny. We just need like a two inch wider wheel. 
and then we'd be in business. All right, so the upper and lower rear control arms on our CB750 cross cart are done. Uh, next time we need to do some rear shock mounts and figure out what kind of shocks and springs we're gonna put on here, and then we can move on to the front. We actually might do the front next time or start out on anyway. We did not weld up the axles because we realized we only had 300 PSI of gas left in our welding tank and we're not gonna be able to get more gas until like later in the week and well, we need to put a front suspension together first. But yeah, I'm really digging how this is turning out, dude. I mean, it's it's looking really good. Big shout out to gopowersports.com for all the parts they sent us for this project. Uh, pick up one of our shirts at cars-cameras.com to help support the channel. And uh, check us out in between videos on Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews for sneak peeks. Check me out at Isaac, it'll be fine. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, leave a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.